I'm starting a brand new survival world, taking advantage of all of the new features in the Caves and Cliffs and Wild updates. I want to build a long-term world filled with epic builds and immersive areas, so join me on the all-new 80s adventure. It spawned me in a tree, but that gave me a different angle to punch my first wood. The plan, as with any new world, was crafting some tools, getting some resources, and making a bed to survive the first night. So episode one, I need to find a suitable area, take over a village, get a bunch of resources, and build the most epic survival starter base ever constructed. So no pressure then. First, I need to get some food for the journey, and then as many different sapling types as possible. Luckily, there were lots of both around spawn. That really is an impressive piece of land. I don't know what is going on here, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. So that was a bit of a mistake, but we survived. That's all that matters. YOLO. It was also here that I first encountered the green menace that plagues every Minecraft world. I filmed this first episode in 1.18, but plan on updating to 1.19 as soon as I can. With some of the basic resources filling my pockets, I headed out in search of somewhere to set up my first area. For this, I needed to find a mesa. I also very much wished at this point that chess boats were already in the game. As you can see by those roofs, we found ourselves a village, and it's a savanna one. I do like savanna bit villages, to be honest. Uh, so if we head round this way, go in between these islands, we should be able to get there. As we head over, we can check out what's in this village and try not to fall in any big holes. As with most villages, the loot was pretty terrible, not a golden apple in sight. So this isn't the biggest village, but we do have a few of these guys here. So what I'm going to do is try and capture these, because we are going to be using these to breed up. So I think this little yellow house is going to be our temporary base of operations whilst we get some things set up. And what I'm going to do is just get some chests made, dump off some of my stuff and start building just a very, very temporary villager breeder. I've set up here a base of operations, so I've got everything that I need. What I need to do now is collect all of the beds, put them all in a hole and start making them some food so I can start breeding them. Just over the hill, I collected a bunch of sand to make some glass and also discovered the mesa area I'd been wanting. Perfect. Whilst all of that glass is smelting and the other bits and pieces, I am going to set up a sugarcane farm. Great. I've now finished putting together a little farming area. So what we've got is alternating melons and pumpkins coming in here. We've got ourselves some carrots in here, wheat, of course, in here and potatoes just down here. And then some extra blocks. We've got ourselves cocoa beans growing up there. We've got the bamboo. We've got the cactus and the sugar cane has been growing all of that time. So that's almost ready for harvest. Alongside that, I collected some of the sheep that were just randomly roaming around this area and I've put them in here. So those are ready to breed up and here I've set up my little cow farm that I'm gonna have and a nice gentleman dropped by and uh, yeah he left us some leads I don't know what happened there but yeah we've got some leads now gonna go and get myself from over this way some cows now bring them back and then start harvesting up some of this stuff so I have some cows and these aren't too far away at all there we are the cows are now back as well i lost a lead on the way but uh, i reckon the guy who drops leads will be back relatively soon but now i can do this for the first time and get myself a decent source of food and leather in terms of the farming everything seems to be set up the crops are growing nicely and the next thing to do will be to head down into this area down here which at the moment is very very unsafe i need to get myself some iron because i literally have four i scoured some caves for iron and that's a bit better i've now got 40 bits of iron that i can smelt up and also almost a stack of copper as well everything's smelting up nicely now and i'll be able to make myself some armor i do have a texture pack that i'm going to be using that actually makes the armor and in the future elytra invisible just so you can see my beautiful beautiful skin much better Whilst doing some more lighting up of the caves under the base, I discovered my first spawner. Sadly, it was a spider one, but it did contain some decent loot. I trapped a couple of villagers to get myself some early trades and managed to get Feather Falling 4 and Fortune, which will make a huge difference making my branch mine. On my way down to the mines, I learned a valuable lesson about not having your mob sounds turned off whilst you're exploring. Shortly after this, though, I managed to get my first diamonds. 
Off this high, I put together a villager breeder based on an Impulse SV design. And then whilst they pooped out some babies, I headed back down to the mines to find some more diamonds. Lots of diamonds. A little bit of crafting later. Ah, oh, I feel so much better now. I've been doing a little bit of trading and started a temporary farm for some wood that I'm going to be needing and I've put together a enchanting setup here. So I am going to build up some levels, maybe do some mining, but most importantly I have enough of these villagers now to do the next task which is to flatten out some ground over here and build up an iron farm because yeah the iron will help with then villager trades and I've also managed to get something that's really really useful rather than needing to actually go to the nether to get potions of weakness if we come over here to this guy here we will see that his final trade is a arrow of weakness so what we can do is just get a regular bow shoot the villagers and then use apples to convert them back from the zombie villagers so we can get some really really good trades before we've even gone to the nether so that's going to be a great great thing now it's time to build the iron farm I'm using a design based on Logical Geek Boys 1 from his Simply Minecraft series which is an absolutely fantastic watch and I'll link it below. I adjusted the spawning and collection systems to make sure the golems all go to the same place to be killed. With this iron farm I'll have a solid supply of iron blocks so I'm really pleased with this and as you can see the golems spawn and then just get flushed down through the lava here I get my iron and also a supply of poppies which I can then turn into some bone meal on this side. N not too much bone meal yet but as time goes on I'll be able to get that all filled up so both of those are going to be really really useful for me. Now I need to sort out getting the villagers fed so we can get some more of them and start building myself some more little pods for some villager trading. My coal resources are running low so I head out to restock. Whilst I'm out I find a beehive which is great because I'm going to need a lot of copper and therefore I'm going to need a honey farm. Spotting a second beehive I set about collecting both of these to bring back to the village. Having put some villagers in their new pods I went AFK overnight and I got myself plenty of iron as that continues to work away. So we've got more than a double chest's worth now so that's going to last us for a long long time as it's about to go and get dark again. The other benefit of going AFK is that without needing to work too hard this guy here and a couple of these guys also got zombified so I can convert them back and I can actually get some cheaper trades for those which is going to be great whilst these guys are converting back I am going to finish off my honey farm I've now got a really, really simple bee farm. So I've managed to shear these up. There's some bees currently chilling out inside these and we'll be breeding these up as time goes on. And once I've bred them up and they're full, I'm gonna automate this whole thing by adding some redstone behind. So I've left a bit of space here. But now I need to get some more villagers out of here, fill up my villager trading area and then start getting some OP gear. I think it's time to go to the nether for some quartz and some levels. The downside for this is needing to mine some obsidian. Oh, I've got my gold helmet. Now let's light this thing and see where I end up. Okay, I've got another waste. It could definitely be worse. And would you look at that? My luck is in. There's another fortress right there. I suppose with it this close, it would be rude to not look around it. It's always good to get hold of blaze rods and nether wall early in the game. With this looted, it was time to bring the spoils home. Now that I'm back, my bees have all grown up and I've finished the automation of my honey farm. This is a really simple but effective design by Gecko, which will be linked in the description. You can use either shears or honey bottles and I've got mainly shears as I'm gonna need to wax a lot of copper. Following a really successful AFK session, not only have I managed to get myself a new jelly cat who was just hanging about around here, but I also now have a bunch more iron and loads of honeycomb and honey bottles so I can start aging and waxing some copper. I've also set out some simple tree farms, but there's one wood that I'm still missing, and that's spruce, so it's time for a little adventure. I've done some preparation and got myself a couple of ender chests. I've also brewed up some useful potions because of this guy here who, thanks to zombification, will trade me ender pearls and glowstone, all for the low, low price of one emerald. And so I can convert these guys whenever I want, I've also captured a zombie who happily is chilling here with his rotten flesh, ready to be wheeled out whenever I need him. Off I set across the ocean to get away from these warm biomes. 
And before too long, I found this tiger biome. So now to get myself a bit of spruce wood, but most importantly, I want to get a bunch of saplings to complete my wood collection. Well, until I get mangrove trees and I need azalea too, but still progress. On my way back, I found myself an ocean monument and been given mining fatigue. Although conquering this will have to be a project for another day. Back at home, the final villager I need for now is in place and he's been zombified and cured. Also, he can sell me golden carrots. I do love steak and it's probably given my choice my favorite food in the game, but it's just so much easier to pop over to this guy and trade to get myself food rather than waiting for the cows to grow up and then having to kill them. And with him in place though, I now need to start the massive, massive task of resource gathering to build my base. I've done some copper mining and I've got a whole bunch of copper that I've already aged and some more that's aging here because for the first build, which is actually going to be over in this direction, I'm going to need quite a lot of copper at different stages, hence why I needed the bee farm to get the honey. I've expanded my villagers to have a couple more things that I didn't have, so I didn't have aqua affinity, I didn't have depth strider and I didn't actually have looting either. So yeah, that's all now up to date and I am going to, whilst these trees grow up a little bit head out and look for some dripstone caves because that's the next thing that I'm going to need is some dripstone and I'm also then going to head down and see if I can locate myself a slime chunk because we are going to need quite a bit of slime as well for decoration not really for any flying machines or anything on my travels I've discovered a village that seems to have some magic water impressive haha in the distance I can see some dripstone that's what we're looking for now just to get over there and here we are, and there seems to be plenty of the stuff. So I will mine a fair chunk of this up and we can also set up a bit of a farm when we get back. Perfect. So I've located myself a slime chunk and built a really, really simple farm. This is a logical geek boy farm from his Simply Minecraft series. I'll put the details in the description, of course, so that you can do this. But basically, you don't need to do anything apart from dig out this area and have one golem. So I'm now just going to sort this area out by placing in all of the hoppers. And then we're going to be using some soul campfires feeding into some of these chests. The last of the chests and the last of the hoppers is in place and now all that's left is to place these campfires so if we go up here we can place these along like so and these i went specially on a long long trip to a soul sand valley to get the soul campfires because basically they are much much quicker to kill the mobs so yeah you can the sooner that you can get the mobs out of a farm the better because the more mob cap that that frees up so i'll just clean this up just like so here here we've got all of the drops that are going to come down here and then we're going to head up and what we have up here when we finally get to the top is the AFK platform which should be in just the right place and I've lit up some of these islands as well and some of the base area which hadn't been lit up before. Now I'm going to AFK for the night and hopefully get myself the slime balls that I need. A few moments later. So after a night of AFKing let's see how our slime farm's done. YOLO. And as we head down here, fingers crossed, we have slime. Ooh, oh, oh, we've got an, a good, good amount of slime. This should be everything that we need. So that is absolutely fantastic. I will take a few of these through and yeah, brilliant. Exactly what we needed. So I got tired of going through my awful, awful chest monster that was over there. And I've given everything a good tidy up and started putting things in chests. I thought I'd be able to fit it all in here, but actually, yeah, it's expanded quite a lot. But because of being around here, I've got loads of resources from the farms, including loads of iron, loads of slime. Just been sorting out the things that I'm going to need because I've also got a plan for what I'm going to be doing just over here in the future, which I'll be showing you about. But before that, then I need to go mining for loads more stone. So I've put together a new silk touch pickaxe just in case this runs short and also need loads and loads of copper. So yeah, I've got a fair amount, but I really, really need more. So it's back into the mines now to get as many resources as I can. Well, after taking some time mining up just the andesite that I need and not getting anywhere near the stone, I've decided and realised it's going to be much quicker if I head back to that nether fortress and get myself three wither skulls and, uh, and a beacon. So yeah, a uh, slight change of plan and that's where I'm off. 
I spotted another nether fortress just across the lava that straddles the basalt delta and soul sand valley. So in theory, if fewer mobs spawn in soul sand valleys, then the rate should be much better here. Come on, let's see if you're going to drop one. Finally! It does seem like it's been forever that I've been killing these guys, which has been particularly painful as they haven't been fast to spawn at all. But we've got the first one, only two more to go. I gave up on that fortress and headed back to the original one to see if that was any better. There we have skull number two. And finally, here we have it, the third wither skull. So that's taken a fair old while. There's a few wither skeletons that I will clean up and then I'll head back home and prepare for the wither fight. Eventually. So I've done the prep work. I've got myself an absolutely stonking smite sword. Uh, I've got my bow obviously ready to go with an arrow. I've made that mistake before. Uh, and also a whole bunch of potions, including some strength too, a swiftness potion, night vision, and some fire resistance. Also some honey bottles if I do get withered badly so I can get rid of that. And also they, they are a source of food. So yeah, it's all ready to go. Now the moment of truth before I chuck this head on and then back away and start drinking these potions. So here we go. And that was a surprisingly easy with a fight. I mean, now that we've got Deep Slate and they don't spread out from the explosion so much, to be honest, they're all pretty easy these days. So you don't even need to uh, to kill them underneath the end portal just to actually speed things up. Though I know it's overkill to prepare, but you never know what's going to happen. So I now have my Wither Star and ready to make my beacon. The full beacon base is in place and I've dug myself a hole that goes right the way up to the surface there. So let's get this going. First of all, we place this guy, then we click in and we've got a Beaconator and haste too. So we pop this in and we're good to go. This is gonna be absolutely fantastic. I cannot wait. Ah, oh, Instamine, I've missed you. I've been very hard at work crafting and moving things as you can see by this what looks like a chest monster but is actually uh, quite well organized with different things in different places for what is going to be my starter build. Now it's not a traditional starter house it's actually going to be the start of my area and it's going to be over here in the mesa. So first thing to do is clear some space and get the main platform set up and then I'll tell you a bit more about it. Stage one of my build is now complete. And as you can see here, we've got an awesome dock side that I've put in place, complete with some crates and some barrels and some things that have been dropped off. But what have they been dropped off by? Well, that you'll have to wait to see. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really pleased with this. And as you may be able to tell from my skin, the eagle-eyed amongst you might gather that this area and my first area and base in general is gonna be in an industrial steampunk style. So what I'm going to be going for is loads and loads of machinery, loads of Victorian style builds with contraptions on them, lots of cogs, lots of chimneys. It's going to be absolutely brilliant and I can't wait to show you the next bits of this base. But before we do that, let's just give you a quick run through of this. So we've already got these barrels. We've also got these cleats so the ships can connect themselves to it. We've got some buffers there. Those you will learn more about a bit later on. But if we come down this slipway and head through here, we'll see that we actually have this underground waterway stroke sewer that's going to come through here as well and potentially i might add some entrance ways and some doorways down to some other stuff underground in here but this is going to come through to a waterway that's going to be lined eventually by buildings and potentially we're going to cut through that cliff and keep this river running through and then we're going to have things on here we're going to have a wharf so we're going to have some buildings around this and I have done some maps of this area. So this is kind of the basic area, as you can see from above. It's quite a big dock that we've got to work with and there's more to come, like I said. Um, but yeah, I've got this here and then I'm going to update with these two maps once we've done the rest of the builds for this first episode for the epic starter house. So without any further ado, I think it's time for me to collect some of these items here and start building in the form of a bit of a time lapse. Thank you. 
And now phase two of the epic starter base is in place, which is this steampunk crane. Uh, I've tried to make it, even though it's steampunk, as kind of realistic in terms of physics as possible. So we've got this wire that's connecting to this pinnacle and this drive shaft that helps us to winch this crane up to whatever angle we need it. We've also got these rails that it's running along, which we put into the dock area. And we've got this giant steam tank that's actually powering the whole thing. And obviously we've got the chimneys coming on here. And yeah, really, really happy with how this has turned out with the big cogs. Let's go and have a quick look inside because it does also have an interior. So if we come up here, we've got these ladders that allow us to get up and down. And believe me, I needed these building it because I wouldn't like to tell you the number of times that I fell off this. Uh, but yeah, really pleased with how it's ended up. We've got this lovely, lovely area going around the crane. So this would spin and allow the crane to point in different directions. And we've also got this lovely walkway. So this will be able to give us a great view of some of the future builds that we do in this area. But if we head up here into the cab, we can open the door like so and we've got the controls here for the crane so great visibility obviously a nice big window we can see how the actual winch is doing through this little window here but great visibility of what we're actually carrying on the crane itself and then we've got this fantastic machine as well with loads and loads of detail but you can see this connects to that steam chamber so this is a big furnace that's powering the whole thing the power comes through runs this conveyor belt that goes right the way up here which winches up and down the crane arm so yeah really really like this there's also a little bed so this would also work as a as a base a little sleeping area but the next thing that we're going to be doing is something that's going to be hanging from this crane and this is going to be the third and final stage of our absolutely epic starter base area so it's time now to kick off another time lapse As the sun comes up on another day, we have now finished our awesome survival starter base. And we've got this giant crane that you saw before, but now we've added to that with the actual starter house itself, which is going to be inside this amazing piranha submarine. So yeah, really, really pleased with how this design has come out. It's got all of the classic elements of steampunk in there, loads of copper, loads of gradients in there as well throughout the build. Can't wait until we've got our Elytra next episode. So tune in for that and then we can have a real good fly around this base uh, we've got the pointed dripstone for the teeth which works so well in this build and yeah just so happy with how this has turned out and really do think we've hit that brief of the most epic survival starter base ever constructed and yeah let me know in the comments what you think of this we've obviously got these big steam tanks these are powering a giant engine at the back here which you can see from the dot so once this is lowered into the water then this is gonna go like absolute stink there and you can see the power coming into it and just yeah the adventures that we would be able to have in this submarine are great we've got our slipway that we can get up and down to the uh we've got uh, up and down to our boat and then we've got this gangplank that takes us up to the inside of the build the interior is not done yet i'm going to be decorating this next episode so make sure that you tune in for that hit that like button hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and yeah we can see over to the village that we took over we've got the village that we still to explore and then when we come here we can go down and look at the under underneath as well so there's two floors on this and we can see out of the mouth through the teeth to the area over here and really really like how that looks loads of space down here as well and just so pleased with how this has come together so all that's left to be said is i hope you've enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed it and what you'd like to see in the next episode and i will see you all next time on adcraft